for, for Greece, what we are talking about is not a capital transfer, but a loan that should be repaid in the future. And I think the situation up to now was abnormal that, that the bond yields of Greece was almost equal to the bond yield of Germany, which is, which is, does, does not make a sense in an economic sense because Greece is a very high public debt. So Greece has an original sin of ha having a very high public debt. Greece should enter a fiscal austerity program to have primary surpluses in the future to reduce its, its public debt. So that's the future for Greece. A devaluation could be a temporary relief, but it just, that is just a temporary mechanism. But so you go for a loan rather than for devaluation. Yeah. But, but the analysts, I mean, listen, going back 10 years, there was barely an analyst in Germany working for the big German banks that thought appropriate that Greece, Spain or Italy join the euro. And I think what we're seeing now is they've turned out to be right. It may be better. For, I mean, listen, I don't want Britain to be in the euro, but I genuinely don't wish the euro's own harm because we all trade together. In this debate, I just want to uh, tell you something that you might not have completely in mind. Would, not, would we not have the eurozone? and the ECB, with the central bank on board, uh, uh, injecting liquidity in the market as earlier as um, August 2007, when the Bank of England thought the market would solve it all out, the city of London would even be in a bigger mess than today. Because at that time, the, the bank settled in, in London, they came and knocked the door of the ECB to get the liquidity the, the Bank of England would not uh, give them. So of course you can stay outside the Eurozone and believe you're in, in, in a good position. But the reality is, just like Ingo Friedrich just said, that the, the existence of the Eurozone is beneficial not only for the member of the Eurozone but also for the whole EU. The UK is getting all of the benefits with none of the responsibilities. I, listen, I do not wish the Eurozone hump. You know, I make that yeah, point the UK we're talking about. No, no, listen, listen. The UK very sensibly, very sensibly has stayed outside of the Euro, just as Switzerland very sensibly has stayed out of the EU. And benefited and, from and, some of the actions and, of the and, European and, Central Bank. And the Swiss can do business with European countries without being part of the Union. The answer I was trying to get was, you know, I mean, I do accept, I do accept that devaluation, you know, may be a short-term fix, but I genuinely think, for the health of the Eurozone, it would be better to recognise, economically, that a massive mistake was made allowing Greece in, and you should let Greece go its own way. Okay, but then you are arguing about the situation in, in Greece, but can we look at the situation in UK and what's going to be your deficit and your public... Come on, you should yeah. not give that to, 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 to Greece delighted. because of this, huh? That's why we're delighted to have a... You know, frankly, all through history, when we've been through periods of weak sterling, it's needed to precede a good period of economic growth. So we're very lucky if we were stuck in the euro right now, given the absolute mess, you're right, that the British government's made of our economy, we'd be far worse off. Ingo Friedrich. I'm, I'm optimistic, and I'll tell you why. Because the other huge currency of the world, that's the dollar. And look, which parts of the world are developing totally different? They use the dollar, the dollar is more or less a stable currency till now, and the euro helps that we have two huge currencies in the world. And if the dollar for such a long time survived differences of south, of north, of ost, of west, of Asia, uh, I think 40 countries use very often the dollar as the real currency. Mm. So if the dollar survived all these problems, the the probability that the euro will have a similar way <coughs> is much bigger than you say now the first difference between three countries and, and let's say the, the core of Germany is starting. This is a sign that the euro will fail. No, this is a sign that the euro has to go step by step in the next way of being a world currency after the dollar, perhaps even in the same range like the dollar. All right, let's, let, let's look forward. All right, I'll, I'll take a point from each of you and then no, I'll let you roll to the On this point, I, because I think, and this is what I've been mentioning earlier, I think if you look what's the, the, the duty or, or the... the, 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 the yeah, the, homework, the homework for the Eurozone yeah. to do in the next 10 years, there might be much more. But I think besides increasing the supervision integration in terms of financial market, the two big challenges, it's about economic coordination and improve uh, how we do it. But the other topic is, of course, the place we have in the international scene, because all this mess has happened because you had global imbalance. And for 10 years, we had the euro, but we use it in the international scene in a passive way, just to protect us from uh, disturbance in, in the exchange rate. I think today, 
this situation is changing and it's time for you, the Eurozone to act actively and to make sure we can settle some kind of arrangement at the worldwide level. Okay, I'll pick up I, was ver I was very surprised today that when we had the meeting with Jean-Claude Trichet, usually it's a member of the Eurozone that advocate for worldwide exchange arrangement. Today it was people from UK and Sweden who were asking for this. So I think times are changing. All right, you wanted to come in. Yeah, <coughs> let me come a little bit about the UK and whether it was a mistake for letting Greece and, and other countries in. Mm. If you look at market valuation right now, UK is valued the same level as, as, as Portugal and Spain. It's the so-called credit default swap that measures the probability yeah. that the government would default. The highest is for Greece and Ireland, it's no doubt. But then, then comes the next group, and UK, which used to have a very low uh, credit default swap, I mean a very low probability that the government will default, uh, has substantial increase and increase to the level equivalent to Portugal and Spain. So all it, was, it was beneficial for the UK to stay out so far, Currently, the market is very cautious about, uh, as just was mentioned, that, well, that, that the, the, the markets are cautious about Britain, yeah. and they're quite right to be cautious about Britain. I, mean, I, don't, I don't deny that for a moment, but the argument I'm making is, had we been in the euro with inappropriate interest rates, our credit rating would be even worse than it is now. Right. I'd, like to, I'd like to move forwards now, rather than, than, than look backwards. Perfectly reasonable point, but let's look forwards. Um, the next meeting of the G20 industrial countries is, is due in April um, in London capital of that well-known non-member. Um, so what should the Eurozone countries be bringing to the table at the next G20? Um, so Douglas, what should the Eurozone countries bring to that? I think my major concern is surveillance. Uh, you know, that's, that's one issue related to the reform of the IMF, which is one of the G20 agenda, because what happened in the past is that all institutions, the IMF or central banks, uh, know that knew that there was certain vulnerabilities. The huge U.S. current account deficit is unsustainable. Within the euro area, uh, there are also countries which, are, uh, which have unsustainable policies. There was huge housing booms all over the world. And <clears throat> there were many warnings that, that something should be done, but nothing had been done. It was also well known that, that the huge derivative markets, for example, the, the total outstanding amounts of derivatives was about 10 times of world GDP, which is a crazy number. So there were, were many signs that, that something will happen, and there is a lot of vulnerabilities in the world. Okay, so the name of the game now is supervision, or better, surveillance. Surveillance, surveillance. Yeah. surveillance. Okay, Ingo Friedrich, do you go along with that? More or less, yes. I think the uh, big part also would be to, to define rules for the finance crisis, to avoid a next uh, crisis like we had in the last. Because uh, in this sense, I think there are new products without Competition without rules. Even competition need rules. Needs rules. And we had to now no rules for this development. So as a big currency, the G20 also have to think about what to do to solve this crisis and especially to take part in new global rules. Because, you know, mm. sovereignty, it starts with greed. It's, it's wandering, you know. Parts of sovereignty in former times uh, go to a next step uh, from the city to the uh, regional country to the national state to Europe and now we are in the situation Mr. UK that even in the continental area is not sufficient to have stability in the world we need above Europe global rules yes, but this is a, the situation but there's a huge but difference so if, if you were writing a, the agenda for but, but April, a, what would you do there's a huge difference between sovereign states making international agreements and being part of a, of a political organization where you give away the ability to make those decisions. And that is the difference. What about an I'm, institution? Not necessarily I'm, a political I'm, I'm organization, an but an institution. The answer to your question is it's quite difficult to know. Because whilst we have all these countries that are in the euro, and yes, they have a central bank, there isn't actually one economic government yet mm -hmm. for the whole of the eurozone. Uh, now, the logic of the arguments that are being made in this place and Sarkozy touched on this a few months ago, is there should be an economic government of the Eurozone. And I would make this point, that the Swedes and the Danes had a referendum on the Euro. They both said no. That if you build a political union with a currency union without the consent of the people, you've got a problem. In America, there, was, there were rust belts and there were huge migrations of labor north, south and east and west during the years of the dollar. But they, but they had a big civil war to sort out their own constitutional arrangements. The danger for Europe is that we're building this 
uh, without actually having the support of our own people. Uh -huh. uh, not yet. Not yet. We're, yeah. we're building a construction without the support of the people, he says. Well, uh, and I would like uh, Mr. Farage to not intervene in this moment of the discussion because we already had the argument in the plenary session and I don't think we need to repeat it here. I just want to make it crystal clear that the two <coughs> referendums mentioning were about the Maastricht Treaty. And just to recall mm -hmm. for our audience that in France there was also a referendum on the Maastricht Treaty which is the one that created the Euro and that's referendum was with. So there's a strong support in the French population. For okay, the and so to come back to the question. Yeah, to the, for the G20. I think 